What's happening YouTube? Fighting Cowboy here, and today I'm going to give you some survival tips and teach you how to be a badass in the Far Cry 3 multiplayer. So if you haven't tried the multiplayer yet, it's definitely something you got to check out. Now don't get me wrong, Far Cry has a great single player experience and it tells one hell of a story, but the multiplayer is actually a ton of fun. And I've played Halo 4, I've played Black Ops 2, and between this and those two big releases, I gotta say, I'm actually having more fun playing this multiplayer than those games. And that's definitely saying something, considering this game is built around a single player experience. Now I don't know if it's the awesome melee kills where you shove a machete through your enemy's chest, or just the pure unadulterated fun of firing off explosive arrows and watching your enemies explode, but there is something in the Far Cry 3 multiplayer that'll keep you coming back for more. But the one thing I've noticed on my way up to level 75 is a lot of people are terrible at this game. I mean, just take this clip right here with the BZ-19. These kids are just getting mowed down one after another. But hopefully after watching this video, you'll be the one gunning down tons of enemies instead of lying in a puddle of blood. So if you've never seen one of my videos before, you're probably wondering, who the hell is this guy and why should I listen to what he has to say? Well, for one, I'm first in New Jersey, so that's got to count for something, right? But enough talking about myself. Let's get into the list. First things first, loadouts. The game does come with five default loadouts, and they're pretty nice, but in the long run, you got to make custom loadouts. Now, one of the nicest things about loadouts in Far Cry 3 is that you can have up to 25 different loadouts, and that's huge, because a lot of games only give you, you know, 5, 10, nah, 25 loadouts. I mean, you could basically have a loadout for every goddamn gun in the game if you really want to. But with all the different possibilities, let's talk about what's going to make a good loadout. Because, like I said, this is the first thing on our list, and it's something you really have to have if you're going to be successful in the multiplayer here. So one of the first things you should consider when you're creating a loadout is what weapon mods do you have? Now the weapon mods are unlocked through decoding. As you can see, I just finished up a couple of decoders right here. Basically, the decoding process is done in this little menu right here, and you'll get a couple different things, you know, CD, flash, DVD, memory card, hard drive, after you win a match. What you receive is based on how you performed. So if you're consistently placing as, you know, number one or number two in the match, you start getting loaded up on hard drives, which obviously are a bitch, and they take eight hours to decode. Now, one thing that helped us move along a lot faster are the speed boosts. As you can see with the speed boost active, my time remaining counts down by two second increments instead of one second increments. Every time you finish a data source, you usually get a speed boost. You can't use your own, so find a friend, send them back and forth, and that's how you keep the speed boosts going. As you can see here though, as long as you keep decoding, you're going to keep unlocking these weapon mods. And to give you an idea on weapon mods, when we go over to the last tab here under progress, you can see all your different weapons and the weapon mods that you have unlocked. Now, while the weapon mods aren't necessary, they are going to give you a lot of flexibility with your weapons. So take the MP5 for example. I have three out of the three different possible ones unlocked, and as you can see, they're ranked. I have an MK2, MK3, and an MK5. Now, the MK5 is the highest level of that mod you can get. So a hard drive is more likely to get you an MK5 than, say, a memory card. And in the long run, MK5 is what you want. But basically, each one of these mods is going to boost a specific aspect of the weapon, and it's going to be detrimental in another aspect. But we're going to talk about how to work around that in just a second. So going to the MP5 in particular, you can see I'm running a Stalker's mod on it. So we get larger magazine with this, but slower movement. Okay, so... Looking at it right now, we basically have some extended mag on here, but we're a little bit slow. And being slow isn't really good with, you know, a run and gun type kit. We're running a submachine gun, so we'll get into counteracting that in a second. But aside from the weapon mods, as you level up your guns, obviously you unlock sights, barrels, ammo, and magazines. So now we're going to talk about what's going to build a good gun. So with the MP5, for example, like I said, I like to do a little run and gun thing with it. So the obvious choice here, toss on extended mag. Now, I already have stalker mod, but by doing this, I have basically double extended mag. So this thing is just has a shit ton of bullets. And if you're just running around gunning a shit ton of people down, you're going to really see that. Like it, it's, you, I mean, you will really see how beneficial that is. Because when you run up on five people and manage to gun all of them down before you have to reload, that's going to save your ass. And then secondly, you know, we're going to toss hot rounds down there because we're going to be running, we're going to be hip firing. I don't need the accuracy as much and I'd rather have the damage. But you know, there's a bunch of other options. Obviously, with hip firing, the sights aren't going to be as important. And of course, the other choice is a sound suppressor, but since there's no way to counteract scouts when they're in the air, I tend to avoid it with a running gun. So, moving on. Secondary is also going to be important when you're building your class. If you see my other videos, you know I'm a complete whore for the bow. In this case, we're using the Predator bow instead of the recurve, and the main reason for that 
is since the MP5 is going to be our run and gun class, so we're going to be close up, we need something that's going to give us some nice accuracy and some nice range. And when you compare the Predator and the Recurve, the basic difference is the Predator has a uh, longer range to it, whereas the Recurve has a better fire rate. So it's going to take longer to knock up our arrows, but we're going to be able to shoot them a little bit farther. And that's going to help to, you know, basically balance out with our MP5. So if we have that one asshole that's sitting in the back with the AR, we're going to be able to pop them off. And then, of course, you know, the bow's a one-shot kill, so never a downside to going with that. Let's go into equipment real quick. So with equipment, there's a couple different things you can look at. You know, you got your grenades options, your explosive options, and your body armor. But with this kit like this, I'm going to be running one grenade and then the basic body armor. And this is, you know, your all-around cookie cutter loadout, but the body armor is going to help a little bit. I've tried it with stuff like bandolier, but I find that that little body armor, that little pinch of protection is going to help me get off that last shot or, you know, survive that one less bullet that's going to help me get a kill. And then on top of that, you know, it's good to have a grenade because you never know when you know, you're going to run up and there's going to be three or four assholes grouped up hiding in a room. And sometimes it's just better to chuck an explosive and take care of business. Moving down from there, we have skills. Build your skills around your class. Like I said, if we're going to be running and gunning and hip firing, snap shooting is perfect for a class like this. But our other skill, speed burst. So remember how we had that decreased speed from the stalker mod? Well, now we got increased sprint, walk, and crouch speed. So that's going to counteract that out. We basically have a real nice movement speed with the submachine gun. We got the extra run and gun accuracy from snap shooting. And then we go into battle cry, which we're going to go a lot into battle cries later. But as you can see, we went with haste here because that's going to give us basically extra movement speed every time we pop this. So it's going to keep us hauling ass around the map, gunning people down. So, like I said, you can make a loadout for just about any situation, but you want to be able to balance your loadout out. You want to make sure you can address a variety of situations. And most of all, you want to make sure that it's built ideal for the play style you're looking for. So along the lines of balancing loadouts, we're going to talk about speed. As you can see here, I'm running with the LMG. Switch to the bow. Boom. It's like a turbo goes on. And this is what I'm talking about when I say you got to balance your loadout. Because basically by taking the bow, a weapon that has relatively high mobility, compared to the light machine gun, which has shit mobility, you can see it here again, we're jogging along, bow comes out, boom, it's like he's sprinting on the track. And, and this is something you want to consider, because basically if you're running a light machine gun, and then you have a secondary like a flamethrower, you're just going to be moving around the map like a fucking snail, and you're not going to want that. So, moving on from there, I said we were going to come back to it, it's second on our list, let's talk about battle cries. If you look into the bottom right corner of the screen, you're going to see the battle cry icon. And this is obviously going to change depending on what battle cry you pick. But basically, you execute these by pressing the right and left thumbstick down at the same time. And if you're not using these, you're not doing multiplayer right. These are going to buff you, they're going to buff your teammates, they're going to give you experience. And on top of that, that experience is going to help you get more score streaks to execute more awesomeness. So, just to see here, we're going to have three people coming up. You'll see the little icons, it just went up to two people. Let's get a little bit closer, get three, and pop this battle cry. See how much experience it gives us. And boom, up to 180. We have our recon halfway up to the poison gas. We went down, but that's okay. Moving on to the next one, we can see right here, we have nothing in our meter at all. Let's get four people grouped up, use it again. Boom, almost all the way up to a recon. Just to show you, right here with one person, only 60 XP, not all that much. Obviously, we helped out this one guy, but the point is, use it when there's more people around. Moving on to item three, when to res, when not to res, and when to just bleed out and stop hitting A. So as you can see right here, I'm getting into a little bit of a firefight. The explosion goes off, I go down. I'm looking around, got two other people down with me. Probably don't want to res here. Let's stop hitting A and see what happens. Oh, what's this? High guy wants to res me? Oh, straight back down for 20 more seconds. That's not smart. If you see you're in the middle of a firefight, and you see there's grenades being thrown at you and lots of bullets coming at you, don't res your teammates. Don't be a dumbass. It's not smart. It's going to put them into a longer spawn timer. Now let's look at an example of how you should be resing your teammates. So we're going to sit here, approach this guy. Apparently, he shoots us down. Now, watch our teammate here. This guy, Kingsley Zuzu, on the other hand. He's going to go. He's going to kill that first guy that shot us down. Looks around the corner checks to see if there's any other bad guys coming. Okay, we see on the screen he's got a second person down. He's checking, making sure no one else is coming up, and now he's going to come back and do the res. This is what you want to do. He killed the guy that killed me, made sure there weren't any other bad guys, and then initiated the res. Be smart. Res like that, not like the first guy. So to conclude my point on resing, if you're balls deep in a firefight with grenades getting chucked at you, probably not a good idea to res your teammate who's right there because he's going to go straight back down he's going to have the full res timer he's not going to be able to load out and that's not good because then you're one man down in the fight so 
just looking like over here. We can see this guy. He's down in a fight. He just lets himself bleed out. That's smart. Now watch all these bad guys I start gunning down. They're not very smart. All of them just sit there tapping A. We can see this guy just sitting there holding the button. You can see them all flailing their arms around like, somebody get me up. Why would you be tapping A during this situation? Like, look at this one asshole down there. There's poison gas everywhere. Obviously, I'm up top on the roof just molesting your whole team with a PKM. This is not when you want to tap A. So if you're in a situation like that, just bleed out. Because there's no point sitting there and slamming on the A button to try and get a res if your base is being bombarded with poison gas. You're better off letting yourself bleed out, res somewhere that's not covered with poison gas, and then come back and make an assault on the enemy. So we've talked about resing properly. We've talked about battle cries. We've talked about loadouts. Let's talk about positioning and team support. So by team support, I mean two things. One when to use your actual supports, like calling in your scouts or doing your poison gas, and two, having proper strategy. So as we can see right here in this game of Firestorm, right now we're up to the end of the game, all we have to do is capture this radio tower and win. So if our whole entire team decided to stand down there and just all try to cap the radio, it's probably not gonna happen because the enemies are just gonna keep throwing grenades in and blowing us up. But just by having me and this one other guy up here, we can see nobody's managing to get in from the left, nobody's managing to get in from the right, and as long as our teammates can cover the one door in the middle that's leading directly to where they're at, we should be able to win this. And sure enough, as you can see right here, kill a couple more people, and victory. We do win it. But as I mentioned, it's also about proper timing of the usage of your score streaks. So take this game of transmission, for example. Enemies trying to get transponder three. I got a bombshell to drop. Let's see what happens. Place it right on three. Good douche. The screen is lighting up with my name. Double kills, triple kills, defensive kills. Shoot this guy in the face, get another one. Let's go on to another example. Here we are in a game of Firestorm. Just bled out. We can see here enemies are pouring into the radio tower. Let's put down some poison gas. And right here, look at this, that the radio tower is blinking. It looks like they're gonna get it. We're gonna see what we can do. Let's add a grenade into the mix. I'm gonna try and kill this one guy. And look at that screen, once again, just lighting up with my name. Double kills, triple kills, kill streak by five, double kills. Even though I went down, I effectively just killed the entire enemy team. Right here in another game. Quick three on three Firestorm match. Let's toss out that grenade, see what happens. Good douche. Grenade mayhem killed the entire team with one grenade. And in the process, effectively stopped them from taking the radio tower. So to close out on team support, the main things you want to focus on are proper timing of your score streaks, and proper positioning in the right situations. As we can see right here, the majority of my team is fighting to hold node number one on this transmission game while it's worth double points. I'm gonna go over, try to capture node number two, completely by myself, what's my safest bet? Let's pull out the bow, it's gonna be a one-shot kill. So let's watch real quick and see what happens here. Oh, here comes one asshole. Boom, down he goes. All right, anybody else, who else is coming? Oh, this guy slides in, takes an arrow to the face. We got node number two. Mission successful, but we can see one more person coming in. Boom! Three arrows, three kills, and we can really see how just one person with some good tactics and the proper timing can really be a game changer for the team and make a huge difference. Now the fifth and final thing I want to talk about is marking. Now all you have to do to mark a target is tap the back button, and what this is going to do is place a little eye over your target to make you aware of where they are. So we can see right here, with that secondary guy marked, I know he decided to run around the mountain instead of sitting there with the first guy. Similar situation right here by marking this guy. I now know he's inside, I can stop wasting bullets. Let's look at another one. Right here, having a little firefight. Get a mark off on this guy, he goes behind there. And even though I'm about to die right here, my two teammates that you can see on the minimap, they now know that this guy's right there. So they can go in and get the kill, and hopefully one of them's gonna come back and res me. So in short, if you have an opportunity to get a mark off, you might as well try and do it. It's going to help the team, and even if you don't get the kill, you'll get assist points for it. In conclusion, that's all there really is to it. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, and hopefully, after a little bit of practice, you'll be the one who gets to decide what happens to your enemies at the end of the match. Hey, stand up. Hey. Oh, oh, you got beat, fucker! <laughs> 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 <laughs>